Good evening and welcome to the BMC Derby High School at the Luke Urban Fieldhouse here on the Thomas Skip Karen basketball program. For this Game 1 event of the state tournament between the Brockton Boxers and your Derby Hilltoppers. We are pleased to welcome you this evening to Derby High School. Good sportsmanship is one of the primary goals of the Indus Classic Athletic Programs. Our student athletes recognize that judgment calls are made in good faith and that they must abide by the decisions of the officials. Spectators can support their Indus Classic program by refraining from derogatory remarks or cheers. We hope that you will enjoy the game and that you will support all the participants in a positive, sportsmanlike manner. Now, let's meet the starting lineups from the visiting Brockton Boxers. Senior, number 10, Demarge Taylor. Senior, number 11, Karan Harris. Nice. Junior, number 15, Abu Kaba. Senior, number 24, Edenosa Ukanba. And junior number 25, Nabil Fabler. The Brockton Boxers are coached by head coach Robert Bowen, assisted by Kevin Rudy and Michael Ivanovich. Now for your Hilltopper. It's pretty good. Number 22. Basketball fans of all ages, 
This is the Luke Urban Field House located on the campus of BMC Durfee High School. Yes, that's right, I said Durfee High School, where today it's the first round of the MIAA playoffs between your Brockton Boxers and the Hilltoppers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, let's give the fans some contest, uh, context as to what brings us down to Fall River today. Both of these teams come into the MIAA tournament at 10 and 10. Brockton beat this Hilltopper squad 2, to no, two and 0 oh during the regular season. Brockton won the division. Well, when you think about it, all that would say that Brockton should be at home at Staff Gymnasium today. If it was only Brockton and Durfee coming in at 10 and 10, they would be. Yes, exactly. I, I just think um, Brockton got the short end of the deal on this um, decision to have the game down here at Durfee High School. Uh, the MIAA's never been real kind to the um, boxers, so they'll just have to play it here in the hostile area. Well, the third team that ruined this all for Brockton was Wellesley. Wellesley came in at 10 and 10, forced a tiebreaker. When there's a tiebreaker in the MIAA, they put all three schools' names into a hat, and whoever comes out first is the higher seed, and that happened to be the Durfee Hilltoppers. So Brockton on the road against a team they beat twice during the regular season, beat the division over the Durfee Hilltoppers. And of course, these being big three divisional rivals, the games did get a little bit heated. Brockton was right there emotionally during both of these matchups, and head coach Bob Bowen did an excellent job of keeping the emotions in check as Chayton Nera, or rather Nick Salmon, is fouled. He'll be at the line for two shots. Both teams yet to score a field goal with 7.32 remaining in the first quarter. Yep, both teams look a little edgy right at the start of the game. Salmon good on his first attempt. 1-0 Hilltoppers. The foul on Abu Kaba. Brockton's starting five, much the same has been all season. Nabil Ferbler, Karan Harris, Demarje Taylor, Etinosa Kumbor, and Abu Kaba. The same starting lineup for the Hilltoppers that we saw at Staff Gymnasium. Nick Salmon, Chayton Nera, along with number 14, Joe Camara, Tyrone Watkins. And Brendan White, who comes up with the steal, Salmon in the corner, thought about the three, gives it over to number 22, Nilan Nera. Down low for number 30, his shot off the top of the backboard, brought down by Etinosa Akunbor. Yeah, good defense by the boxers right there. Made him take kind of a wild shot. Karan Harris with it now. Brockton is wearing their away all black jerseys. Worth mentioning that these two schools have the exact same color scheme. Brockton, they're away black jerseys, white stripe down the side of the shorts, red trim around the white numbers as Abu Kalba puts up a floater and that's good. Brockton up two to one over the Hilltoppers. That was a beautiful shot. He should have been, been uh, fouled on that play, but no call. Durfee on the other hand wearing their home white jerseys, a three for Kamara is good. Uh, that's Brendan White, junior guard, and Brockton's going to call a timeout. So anyway, Durfee wearing their home white jerseys with red trim around the black numbers. A little bit of confusion. Nabil Ferbler comes off the floor. Yeah, he, he got hurt. I think he might have caught a, a, a foot or, or, or something in his, um, in his um, most precious area. Well, the sharpshooter Precious Oko is on the floor as his replacement. He takes a three and that comes up short. Kron Harris tipping the rebound out. Now Harris driving baseline, kicks it out to Abu Kaba. Kaba working his way into the paint, gives it out to Demarge Taylor, who is called for the travel as Oko is about to fire up a three. And Demil Ferbler on the Brockton bench walking Very gingerly. a little bit gingerly. Nick Salmon pump fake for three, spinning into the paint. His floater no good. Precious Oko with the rebound. He gives it over to Demarge Taylor. Taylor to Harris, back to Taylor. Over to Oko, back to Taylor. Harris now for Kaba. Kaba pump fake, driving baseline, loses it out of bounds off of Durfee. Brockton retains possession. 
Five and a half left to go in the first period. 17 on the shot clock for the boxers. Yeah, right, box is still a little, looks a little tentative. Durfee is playing some good defense. Kaba driving inside off the glass, no good. The tip. Ooh, nice. I, I think that's number ET. 24. Yeah, ET. ET got his hands on it and tipped it right back up and in. So Brockton it up. Uh, Brockton tied rather, four to four. Nick Salmon driving inside now. He puts one up off the back of the rim. ET with the rebound for Brockton. Yeah, Brockton's doing a good job when Durfee drives to the basket. They're really making Durfee work and it's um, throwing off their shot. Kaba thought about the three, gives it to Karan Harris. Harris to Taylor. Taylor strong over for Harris, who receives the overhead pass. Taylor for three, it looks good, and Ooh, it is. Good ball movement by the boxes. Taylor was ready for that pass. Took the shot and hit it. Chayton Nera now, the senior captain. Over to Brendan White, spinning, and he's called for the travel. It'll go back in favor of the boxers. Yeah, again, again, good defense by the boxers. Very busy week for Brockton Boxers Athletics. We'll give you the rundown a little bit later on, but it's all MIAA tournament related. So stay tuned for what the week has in store. For the traveling show. Taylor to Oko, Oko back to Taylor. Four on the shot clock, Taylor for another three. This one goes wide and the shouts of air ball coming from the very large Durfee fan section. Yeah, very boisterous this evening. I'm sure they'll, they'll have a lot to say throughout this basketball game. Should be exciting. Seven to four, boxers on top halfway through the first quarter. Nick Salmon out to number 22, Nillen Nero, who fouled out of the last matchup between these two teams. His shot no good, pressures Oko to Taylor, to Harris, back to Taylor. Oko for three is no good off the back of the rim. Brought down by Joe Camara. Camara strong in. Loses it on his way up to Marge Taylor. Going to be called for the hold. It looked a little bit soft to me, but yeah. I'm not wearing the stripes. No, no. It, it, it was a good foul by Taylor if, if it was a foul because it prevented the um, easy two. He'll have to earn him, earn him on the free throw line. Very interesting setup here at Luke Urban Fieldhouse. Just looking at the hoop, it's about two feet in front of the baseline. There's a yep. lot of room underneath the hoop. As going two for two was Kamara. Seven to six, Brockton on top, three and a half to go in the first quarter. Karan Harris looking for somewhere to go with it. He finds Demarge Taylor back to Harris. Back to Taylor. Brockton certainly taking their time on offensive possessions. Not necessarily a bad thing. Precious Oko to Kaba down low. He puts it up. No good. E.T. tipping the rebound. Karan Harris comes down with it. E.T. down low. Fouled on his way up and he will be at the line for two shots. Nice, nice job Brockton up on the boards. Getting their rebound on the shot. Getting a second attempt at the basket. Rewarded with a free throw. Brockton with three subs. Tijan, Glenn, Darty, Tariq Yaya, and Sonny Oak and Lola. Karan Harris and Abu Kaba come out of the game. And Glenn Darty will replace Etanosa Akumbor as soon as he now, now makes or breaks this free throw. Brockton, shot. Brockton needs the bench to be productive when they get out there as well as play good defense. Nilanera down low for uh, Kamara, his three no good. Looked like it went out of bounds, yeah, but sure like did. I said, it, there's a lot of room underneath the hoop between that and the baseline. Chayton there all the way in off the glass, no good. Sonny Oak and Lola able to tip the rebound to Demarge Taylor. Brockton looking for the give and go with Tariq Yaya, no good. Now number 30 all the way in, had enough spin on it. Wow, a lot of bodies on the floor, Mad Dog. Up and down the court they go, Precious Oko slowing things down over to Taylor. 
Taylor back to Oko, back to Taylor, down low for Okinola. Taylor for three is no good. Yayo is yeah, he, a half second in front of the rebound. Exactly, he just missed time that uh, rebound attempt. Kamara for three is good. And Durfee has the lead, nine to seven with two minutes to go. You're having a little bit of trouble hearing us <laughs> yeah, because wow. this gym is pretty electric. It sounds like the announcer for the Boston Celtics at the Garden is here. Well, I tell you, I'm looking up in the Raptors, Matt, and there's some really nice speakers up there. Matter of fact, I see, I see three at one end of the basket, three at the other end, so they got a lot of, lot of noise to make here, or a lot of noise they're making, including the announcer. Tashawn loops into the game for the Hilltoppers along with Tejon Glenn Darty for the Boxers. Etanosa Kumbor getting a breather on the bench. Nilan Nero to his brother Chayton. Chayton takes about 15 steps with the ball. Yeah, I, and he I draws the foul somehow miraculously. I thought he traveled before the foul. Another break for the Durfee Hilltoppers. You, you can see um, both refs are discussing it. Let's see what happens. He did. There we go. They're going to call it the travel. Durfee's head coach a little bit upset with that call, but hey, it is what it, it is. is. There's what like it is. 15 cameras in this gym right now, so I'm sure replay is not out of the question should they want to go back and look at it. 9-7, to seven, Durfee on top. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Tariq Yaya over to Demarge Taylor. Plenty of space back to Yaya. Marcus Azor getting ready to come into the game for Brockton. Oko for three is good. We, Brockton needs him to make those shots out there to um, keep the defense honest. They're going to have to come out there and defend that if he keeps hitting it. Brockton back with the lead, 10 to 9, a one point edge for the men in black. Nick Salmon all the way in his short floater is good. Yeah, that was a, a break right there of Durfee. He kind of lost it with the good defense, but it came right back to him. Took advantage and made the shot. Yeah, yeah, has overhead pass complete to Demarge Taylor. Oko, a rainbow three. This one no good. Brought down by Tejon Lopes. The sophomore guard getting some playoff action. Chayton Nera out to Lopes. He takes a long three. No good. Oak and Lola coming down with the rebound. About a half second difference between shot clock and game clock. I'm sure Brockton is going to hold on for the majority of the 20 seconds that's left. Demarge Taylor dribbling it, backing up, right in front of the Durfee fan section. Hearing the loud cheers from, seems like the 200 students behind him. Eight seconds over to Tariq Yaya, back to Taylor. Taylor now driving inside, loses it, picked up by Glenn Darty. He goes up and down, the buzzer sounds. Brockton unable to get a shot off. And into the first break, Durfee comes out with an 11 to 10 lead, a very competitive first quarter, Miles. Yeah, well, it seems like both teams a little tentative in that first quarter, but um, by the low score. So I'm sure that they'll get, they, you can see that last couple minutes, they were getting a little bit more feel for the game and everything. I look for a very productive sec, uh, second quarter game by both teams. Well, 11 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second quarter action right after this. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. 
Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Welcome back into the Luke Allen Fieldhouse here on the campus of BMC Durfee High School. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson, in this first round matchup of the MIAA playoffs between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Durfee coming in with an 11 to 10 lead and a steal right off the bat for the Hilltoppers into the second quarter. Nick Salmon with it. Salmon stops and pops for two off the front of the rim, no good. Glenn Darty for the Boxers with an uncontested rebound. Right now the Boxers are controlling both ends of the boards. They just gotta continue that good production there on the boards. Marcus Azor fresh into the game. Whistle stoppage. And arm bar. Yeah, Durfee's, Durfee's playing real physical on offense as well as defense. Neelan Nera getting into the foul column. And now a foul against the Brockton foul Boxers. Sonny Oak and Lola called for the push. His first, team third. Not a lot of fouls thus far in this game. Three against the Boxers, two against the Hilltoppers. Much was not the case when we saw these two teams in action at Staff Gymnasium. In fact, Nilan Nera by himself had five fouls. Oh, that's like a travel. Nick Salmon making the same move, stopping and popping for two in and out. Tariq Yaya coming down with the rebound. He quickly gives it over to Marcus Azor. Azor to Yaya as the sharpshooter Marcino Louis Charles getting ready to come into the game. Glenn Darty is called for the travel. Louis Charles replaces Tariq Yaya. Yeah, the announcer got that wrong. That was double dribble. Checking for the boxers, number 22, Marcin Louis Charles. So two sharpshooters, Precious Soko and Marcino Louis Charles. On the floor for the boxers as head coach Bob Bowen looks to build a lead against the Hilltoppers. Tyshawn Lopes off the rim, no good. Chayton Nara starting and stopping. Takes four steps with it. Yes, I counted. <laughs> off the backboard, no good. Azor floating it for Oko. Oko is fouled on his way in. Rather, that was Louis Charles. Yeah, nice quick pass by Azor to the driving man. Forced a foul. Foul on Durfee's number two, his second, team third. Third foul against the Hilltoppers, inbounding foul. Precious Oko sending it in for Oak and Lola over to Azor. Azor thought about the three, now drives inside, puts up a floater off the back of the rim, no good. Glenn Darty easily with the rebound. Louis Charles for three, a little bit too long. And Durfee comes down with it. This is Joe Camara. Kamara to Chayton Nara to Nick Salmon. Salmon back to Chayton over to his brother Nealon. Back to Kamara. Kamara driving inside. Finds the hole off the glass and in. Yeah, that was a breakdown on defense by number 35 for the boxes. Oko for a long two, no good. It's going to be out of bounds off of the Brockton boxers. And again, number 30. Airball the chance from the Durfee crowd. Brendan White coming in. Abu Kaba back into the game for the Boxers. Five fifty-two to go in the second quarter. Thirteen to ten in favor of the Hilltoppers. Nilan Nara for three. Too long. Abu Kaba receives the pass. Azor up to Oko. Oko driving baseline, stops, pops, floater, no good. Neil and Nara with the rebound. Yeah, he, he misjudged that shot there. That should be a charge. charge. Good, good. That is a charge as Azor planted his feet, that protected was, his jewels, and went down. Exactly. That was a beautiful play by a beautiful defensive play by Azor. He's going to come on out. Nice job while he was in there. The game for the Demarge Taylor back in, and number 13, Jerice Harris, replaces Precious Oko, who 
has been a little bit cold from beyond the arc tonight. Not unusual. But we've seen it. It only takes one big shot for Oko to come down and Jerese Harris nailing a three from deep in the corner. All back tied up at 13 apiece. 5-10 left to go in the second quarter. Yeah, that was a nice shot by Harris. Kamara in for White who loses it and makes a circus move trying to draw the foul. The refs don't fall for it. Abu Kawa throwing it in, received by White. Nick Salmon picking up the loose ball. Salmon working his way in, goes up and down. Nice call by the referee. And it's gonna be an offensive. Nick Salmon's like, what did they do? I believe he's, he said he traveled. Looked like it. Yeah, it looked like he traveled. Of course, the difference between playoffs and regular season in the MIAA is, of course, there's three officials on the floor, something that I like. Nice and job there. Two of them calling a foul. Tejon Glenn Darty will be at the line for two shots. That was a nice job by Tayshawn. Got the ball, went right up with the shot, and got body on him. Got some body contact. Durfee's starting to get into a little bit of foul trouble. That is five against the Hilltoppers. Of course, two more. Brockton will be in a shooting situation no matter where the foul occurs. Glendardi missing his first. And looking to give the boxers a one point edge here is Tejon Glendardi. Good on his second attempt. Etanosa Kunbor replaces Glenn Darty. 14 to 13, boxers on top. 4.32 to go in the first half. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson. Coming to you from all the way down Route 24. Beautiful Fall River, Massachusetts. Nick Salmon working against Marcel Louis Charles. Kamara back to Salmon. Brennan White calling for it. Salmon's going to take it himself. He airballs it. Antonosa Kumbor coming down with the loose ball. Demarge Taylor to Harris, who can't handle it. Out of bounds off of the boxer. Yeah, a little, little miscommunication right there between passer and receiver. Brockton with quite a number of turnovers in, early on in this first half. Nick Salmon thought the better of giving it to Brendan White, who would have been intercepted by Demarge Taylor. Now he finds White, driving inside. White goes down. Uh, and really, White, like he, he was out of control. Over his own feet. Yeah, he was out of control, but they're going to call a foul. Demarge Taylor called for the trip. Azor will go in to replace Taylor. Bob Bowen immediately requested an explanation from the officials, and rightly so. 14 to 13, Brockton on top as this inbound pass sent a little bit too high and wide. Now, that was good defensive inbound by the boxes. Azor over to Louis Charles to Harris, stop and pop three off the back of the rim. White comes down with the rebound for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Three and a half to go in the second quarter. Okay, Harris not shy about throwing up the three. Foul the boxers, number 22, his first, team fifth. Karan Harris comes into the game, replaces Louis Charles. Check that, Karan Harris. Brendan White looking for Tyshawn Lopes, finds Nick Salmon. He puts up a shot, no good. Throws the rebound back to Lopes. In for Neelan Nera. This one tapped over to Kamara. Good back job, the boxes White. keeping their hands up. Nick Salmon off the glass, no good. Loose ball picked up by Abu Kaba. He sends it long for Jerese Harris. 
shortly out of bounds. Miles, I don't know whether it's the angle we're sitting at, we're in the corner next to the Brockton bench or what, but this court seems very wide and not very long. Yeah, it's, it's very wide, but it's just the angle where we're sitting at. And the fact that it's a bit deeper depth perception for the boxers down here playing Durfee. They're used to it. Brockton's trying to adjust. Salmon on one end throwing the ball into Abu Kaba's left arm. Abu Kaba on the other end going up foul. Joe Kamara called for the hit. To the for the Tough break for Abu Kaba that just rolled off the rim. Could have had an end one. And Abu Kaba, a very good free throw shooter. Hits his first attempt to give the boxers a two point edge. Precious Oko into the game. Checked in a little bit too early. Jerry's Harris will take a breather on the bench. Two, two at the line was Abu Kaba. 16 to 13, a three point edge for the Brockton boxers. Nick Salmon hands off to Kamara. Kamara working his way inside, spins, gives it out to Nealon there for three off the back of the rim. Brandon White uncontested rebound at the charity stripe. Oko comes down with his rebound to Marcus Azor. Trying to spread the lead a little bit. Atanosa Kumbor out to Azor to Oko. Back to E.T. And a charge called against E.T. Good, de good defense right there. Tiny bit of acting, but it was good defense. His first, team six. An errant horn from the scorer's table as the ball is in play. They say play on, so two seconds wasted off the shot clock for that. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. Kamara for three in the tie is good. 16 apiece with 155 to go. Karan Harris, a rainbow wow. three, no good. Nealon there on contested rebound. Tejan Lopes on the other end to number 21, stop and pop two, no good. Nick Salmon flies out of nowhere to grab this rebound, gives it over to Gabe de Oliveira, and he hits a three, and the Hilltoppers have the lead once again. 19 to 16 in a very loud Durfee High School gym at Tenosa Kungor, fouled by De Oliveira, who just hit a big three. Foul on Durfee's number 21. On the other His end to give the Hilltoppers the lead. Hilltoppers starting to warm up here late in the second uh, quarter for the Hilltoppers has regained the lead. Well, 17 fouls against the Hilltoppers. You know what that means. Brockton in a one and one shooting situation for the rest of the minute and 15 seconds in this first half. Nick Salmon to Kamara. He holds up. And Akumbor will be called for yet another foul. Uh, Abu Kawa uh, called for the hold. Number 15. His second, team seven. Oken Lolo will come in to replace Kaba. Kamara misses his one attempt. Both teams now in a one and one shooting situation. Oko out to Azor. Azor two handed over to Abu Kaba. Kaba to ET down low. Has it pushed out of his hand and carries it out of bounds. Now the mistake ET made right there. Beautiful pass to him. He should just put it right up. He bounced it off the ground. Once you bounce a big man, you bounce it underneath the basket. There's always a chance for somebody to come and knock it away. And that's what happened. He should just put it right up. Under a minute to go now. 57.7. 19 to 16. Hilltoppers on top. Neelan Nara gives it over to Tajon Lopes. Leaves it behind for Nick Salmon. Salmon to De Oliveira. Salmon for three is no good. Okanola grabbing the rebound between two Hilltoppers. He quickly gives it to Marcus Azor. Oko for three and the tie is good. Nice shot by Oko. Brockton needed that. 
19 to 19, shot clock is off. 22 seconds to go in the first half. Durfee holding on for last shot, trying to take a lead into the half. Neil and Nero over to Brendan Carvalho. Carvalho to Lopes, a short two, no good. Oko with the rebound, loses it to number 21. The buzzer sounds, Durfee unable to get a, off a shot. We head into the break. All knotted up, 19 to 19. Not the highest scoring of games, not the most perfectly played of games, but Miles, a very competitive game, and we've got 16 minutes of even played basketball to determine who goes home early. Exactly, and two things Brockton has to do when they come back out here in the second half. One thing is cut down on the turnovers. Way too many turnovers in, that, in those first two quarters. The other thing they have to do in the second half, continue in dominating the boards, offensively as well as defensively. 19 to 19, headed into the half. The Durfee Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers in this first round of the MIAA playoffs. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key? is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. OK, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. Great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back in to the Luke Allen Fieldhouse here on the campus of BMC Durfee High School for today's first round MIAA South sectional playoff matchup between your Brockton Boxers and the Durfee Hilltoppers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson here on the road, BCA traveling all the way down Route 24 to bring you this game. Both teams coming in at 10 and 10, but due to the very technologically adept tie-breaking process in the MIAA. Durfee's name was the one on the paper that came out of the hat first. So they get to host the home game. Durfee, it's Brendan White, hits a three. 22 to 19 is the score coming into this half. Durfee wearing their home white jerseys with red trim around the black numbers. Brock in their away black jerseys with red trim around the white numbers. Etanosa Kumbor called for the travel. Again, Kumbor shouldn't have put the, he puts the ball on the floor when he should just go right up with it. Golden opportunity wasted right there by the boxes. Chayton Nero over to White. Very, uh, we'll call it interesting first half. 19 to 19 was the score at the end of the first half. A lot of turnovers. A lot of rebounds for the Brockton Boxers and not a lot of points. A lot of missed shots. ETL to Abu Kaba. Kaba pump fakes. Looks for Echinose Kumbor. Instead finds Brennan White. Yet another turnover. Kudos to the Mad Dog research team. 
Headed up tonight by the one and the only Mike the Postman Simmons. Nil and Nair all the way in. His layup no good. Brought down by his brother Chayton. Chain to Joe Camara. Nick Salmon for three is no good. Out of bounds off of Durfee. Anyway, the Mad Dog Research Team headed up by the one, the only Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brocken. Has told us that this court is named the Thomas Skip Karam Basketball Court in the Luke Allen Fieldhouse on the campus of BMC Durfee High School. All the memories of football season over at the Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. Nick Sand flying in, misses the layup. Kamara under the basket, turns it over to Abu Kaba. Kaba loses it, picks it up, stops, pops. Oh, two is good. that was pretty. He had trouble getting it down the court, but he kept his cool. Kind of flipped it up there, went in softly, quieted the crowd down a little bit. Nick Salmon all the way in, lays it up and in. Salmon doing, Salmon doing a good job there, moving without the basketball towards the um, basket. Of course, Nick Salmon, the starting quarterback of the Hilltoppers football team. You know what? Now, that doesn't surprise me because I noticed he, he likes to use his body and his elbow when he drives to the basket. Very physical basketball player when he's out there with the basketball. Precious Oko, the sharpshooter in for DeVille Furbler. 24-21, 5.20 left to go in the third quarter. Chayton Nera with the ball now. Of course, the starting running back of the Hilltoppers football team. Salmon, wide open path to the basket. He hits the rim. Was fouled? Yeah. It's tough to see from this angle because we're at the other end of the court, but it looked like there was some body contact, possibly. I'll give the refs a benefit of the doubt on that call. Very aggressive move by the uh, the guard there. Well, excuse me, the forward and captain, Nick Salmon. The first thought, I thought he was going to be called for hanging on to the rim, which, of course, is a technical foul. Salmon 2 of 2 at the line, 26 21, 5 point edge for the Hilltoppers. Demarge Taylor, Abu Kaba, back to Taylor. Down to Oko, quick three in the corner is no good. Kaba getting the rebound, has it slapped out of his hands by Joe Kamara. Loose ball, scrum on the floor. It's rolling around, picked up by Abu Kaba. We're going to have a foul. Called on Chayton Nera. Yeah, I think they'll call that on number 22. Um, You're right. Two, Good hustle by the boxes. Taylor over to Karan Harris. Harris to ET, out to Taylor. Taylor driving inside, wild layup. Hits the side of the rim, no good. Nealon there gives it to his brother, Chayton. Four and a half to go in the third quarter of this game, getting uglier by the second. Nick Salmon all the way in. Oh, come on! And Harris who's called for the block, or the hit rather. That looked like all ball to me. Glenn Darty will come in and replace Setanosa Kumbor. And Salmon hits his first attempt. Now Glenn Darty's coming in. Glenn Darty's got to make a presence out there for the boxes. Salmon 2-2 two two now, 4-4 four four in the half from the charity stripe. Demarge Taylor. Put the boxers down by seven. Oko back to Taylor. Taylor back to Oko for three. It's good. Nice shot by Oko. One would hope that that's the shot that Oko needed. Right, right to get him going in this uh, second second half. Salmon out to Chayton. Chayton down low for Nealon off the glass. And in. Yeah, that was just a breakdown of defense there. Somebody didn't get them in.
Oko to Taylor. Taylor working his way inside. Followed by Shaden Nara, who says my feet were planted. Two of the three officials disagree. Yeah, nice drive by Taylor. A little wild shot, but it worked for him. Somebody got him on the arm. And right now, we're, we're in the second half, third quarter. Foul, again, I'll say it again, foul shots are critical. Especially if you're behind by six. Taylor, one of two at the line. 30 to 25 to score. Durfee on top with three and a half to go in the third quarter. Kamara give and go with Nealon Nero. Nealon hard across for Brendan White for three is good. You know you think he hit the winning shot. Someone get this guy a professional <laughs> audition. Shaden hitting this one out of bounds. So Brockton with an inbound right in front of their bench. You always seem to get in the action there, Matt. Always. It always finds us. Always finds us, yes. Taylor to Oko, back to Taylor. Looking for Oko, finds Kron Harris. Harris being pestered to Oko for three is good. There we go. He's heating up. Doing a good job moving without the basketball. If he's not open, if he's covered on one corner of the basket, he'll go to the other side. Durfee having some issues getting it up the floor. White for another three, no good. Glenn Darty ripping down the rebound one-handed. Precious Oko with it. Stopping and popping from the charity stripe. No good. Glenn Darty. Nice, nice, point. nice. Bang. Count it for Tejon Glenn Darty. 33 to 30. And a timeout called by the head coach of the Durfee Hilltoppers, Jameson Guimon. That was a nice job by Glenn Darty. Go up for the offensive boards without banging. Went up with his height, grabbed the ball, and nicely put it back up the glass and in. 2.28 to go in the third quarter, 33 to 30, Durfee on top. But Precious Oko and the Brockton Boxers have heated up in the last couple of minutes after what was a very ugly first half. We're stepping into the gym at the moment, the former superintendent of Brockton Public Schools and then the Secretary of Education for Massachusetts, and now the Superintendent of the Fall River Public Schools, Dr. Matthew Malone. Of course, chatting up all of his old buddies, Tom Kenny, and Tom Pileski, both in the house, former athletic directors of Brockton, along with now the see, current athletic director, see, Kevin Caro. I can go back further with Tom Pileski. When I was at Brockton I, he was the um, he was a gym teacher and a tennis coach. Neil and Nara losing it out of bounds off of Demarge Taylor. And he was just a young fella back then. That was in the 1970. I'm class of 74. You've got just a few years on me. <laughs> of course, I was part of the greatest class in Brockton High School history. <laughs> oh, really? 2011, Neelan Nair for three, no good. Brendan White tapping the rebounds, out of bounds, off of Precious Oko, Durfee. I tell you, it looked like number 30 for the um, Hilltoppers went over the back. Thought it should have been a whistle, but no call. Chayton Nair, quick three, air balls it. Sonny Oak and Lola, contested rebound. Two minutes to go in the third quarter, 33-30. Low scoring affair here at the Luke Allen Fieldhouse. Kamaji Taylor working his way inbound, jumps, throws it to Karan Harris. Harris goes between the legs looking for Glenn Darty, taken by Brendan White. Over to Neal in there off the glass, no good. Oh, that was a beautiful sh sh um, block shot right there. I couldn't see who blocked it, but he went sky high for that one. Marjay Taylor getting some direction from the coach. 
Sonny Okalola cheating there, getting into a shoving match. Shoko misses the three. Nice shot. Nice and shot. one for the big man, Sonny Okalola, who will be at the line for the boxers' first and one of the day. Yeah, nice job by Okalola to, to um, set his spot there for the rebound. He was kind of directing traffic a little bit, trying to let the guards know where to go with the ball. And he'll get up there and try a three-point play. Cut this Plus lead to some, two. Some confusion. As they did not count the bucket. Okay, now they did. Now, there it is. So Okinola missing his one free throw attempt. Foul called on Gabe de Oliveira. Brockton now working the full court press. Tajon Lopes up to Nick Salmon. Salmon all the way in, down low for Neil and they're uh, off the glass and in. Oko stopping and popping for Bang. three. And we have a tie ball game, 35 to 35. Brendan White for Durfee, can't do nothing with him. Oko's got that quick release yes. and he's shown it off. Yes, he does. Increasingly so in the second half. Joe Camara drawing the block against Tijan Glenn Darney. 40.7 to go in the third quarter, all tied up, 35 to 35. Salmon down low, windmill no good. Oko comes down with the rebound. All the way in, off the glass and in. And Brockton has the lead once again. Yeah, Oko's doing it all, outside as well as inside. Nice drive by the boxer. Neil and Nero, one touch pass, caught it in midair and threw it in midair to Brendan White, who was followed by Glenn Darty. And he'll be at the line. Yeah, I think that's shots. his second foul. This is third. Shot clock off, 19.6 to go. Brendan White at the line trying to make this a tie game yet again. Will not do so as he misses his first attempt. You know, this, this um, Hilltopper team, most of these guys have been out there most of this game. I, I wonder how much gas they got left in that fourth quarter. It got left in that tank for the fourth quarter. Oko calling for the ball with 10 seconds left. Demarjay Taylor finds Oko. Oko for a three beyond the baseline off the back of the rim. Tipped back up by Oko. Uh, yeah. Sonny Okinola who's called for an over the back and he doesn't know what he did. Going to be a push against Okinola. 4.9 to go. Team seven. Neil and Nera at the line, of course, that is the seventh foul against the boxers. One on one situation for the entirety of the fourth quarter for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Only down one point to the Brockton boxers in the first round of the semi double A playoffs. All tied up, Neil and Nera off the back of the rim, had enough spin on it. And it went straight up and back down. Neil and Nair for the lead is no good. Louis Charles with the rebound. Taylor can't keep it in bounds. And Durkee has a shot to take the lead with 2.4 left in the third quarter. Brockton, again, they got to um, avoid the turnovers, unnecessary turnovers. The clock's not moving. They're going to. Call the third quarter? Wow. Nick Salmon received the inbound pass, put up a quick shot. The clock was not moving, so the officials decided, well, oh, yeah, that was close enough to 2.4 seconds, so why not they call the third quarter off? And once again, we're all tied up, 37 to 37 miles. Brockton a little bit better in that third quarter than they were in the first half. What do they need to do to keep the foot on the gas and really accelerate? Well, they're doing a good job with the boards defensively, defensively as well as offensively. Problem still is too many turnovers. They've got to cut down on turnovers here in this fourth quarter. They can ill afford turnovers because that's what's keeping Durfee in this ball game. 
37 to 37 the score at the end of the third quarter. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you the fourth and final quarter of the first round of the MIAA playoffs right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another more will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going bucket! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe, how was school today? Hi, Dad, it was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Welcome back into the Skip, Thomas Skip Karam Court on the Luke Allen Fieldhouse here at Durfee High School for the fourth quarter of action between your Brockton Boxers and the Durfee Hilltoppers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. 37 to 37 the score coming into this fourth quarter between the Boxers and the Hilltoppers. And Miles, it's been an ugly game and that's been the story. The turnovers on both sides of the court. Exactly, I would say it's been ugly on both sides of the basketball court. Low scoring ball game, last quarter should be very interesting. Well, Brockton and Durfee, of course, both being a part of the Big Three division. All three teams of which have the exact same school colors, because why not? Nice, nice drive. The visiting Brock, Brockton boxers wearing their away black jerseys with red trim around the white numbers. Durfee home whites with red trim around the black numbers. Loose ball picked up by Joe Camara. Stop, stop, stop the glass and in. Wow. Golden opportunities for a steal. Slip out of the hands of the boxes. Whoa. Taylor counted and won. He did a great job not, not traveling and suspending himself in the air to keep his foot off the court and made a nice shot in. Chance for a three-point play right here. Big play by Taylor. The score is 41 to 39. The scoreboard not reading that quite yet. They have not counted the bucket. Now they're telling them subs come in. They do count that bucket. 41-39. Demarge Taylor at the line to try to earn three points the old-fashioned way. To John Glenn Darty. Takes a breather on the bench, replaced by Etinosa Akunbor. Taylor is good, three point edge for the boxers, 42 to 39, 6.45 left in the fourth quarter. Chaden error to Joe Camara. Camara hard off of the right shin of Demarche Taylor and into some poor sorry suck. Yeah, Chaden look at, he, he's complaining row. about it right Hey, you're in the front row, you're in the action. That's what happens when you get in the front row. Part of the very interesting gym setup, a very wide court. And a lot more room as Brendan White hits another big three. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of space between the stands in one side of the court here, and not so much on the other. Yeah, that's interesting. Marcelo Louis Charles for three. Anything you can do, I can do better. 
says Marcelo Louis Charles back to a three point edge for the boxers. Louis Charles got ice in his veins. Travel, travel. Dylan Nara called for the travel. We'll go back the other way. Abu Kaba replaces Precious Oko. Hey, have you noticed, Matt? Not a lot of Sonny Oak and Lola. Excuse me, not a lot of uh, timeouts in this um, third and fourth quarter. We're thankful for the little things in community access. Louis Charles pump fake to Marge. Taylor takes the three, is wide to the left. Brendan White double teamed in the corner. He's got nowhere to go with it. And a timeout very alertly taken by Coach. Jameson yeah, yeah, yeah. The coach, the coach bailed him out there. If you ask me, I thought the referees kind of held the whistle a little bit, a split second too long. Should have been a, a turnover or at least a jump ball. 45-42 the score. Brockton on top by three of the Durfee Hilltoppers. With 5.44 left in the fourth quarter. So we talked about the busy week ahead for the BCA team. We'll call us the Barnum and Bailey Traveling Circus. We're in Fall River tonight. Attleboro tomorrow for the Lady Boxers first round matchup against the Attleboro Blue Bombardiers. Wednesday night, we'll be in Mansfield and or Bourne at Gallo Ice Arena for the Boxer Hockey Team first round matchup against an opponent to be determined. Thursday night, we could be anywhere. And the same goes with Friday. Well, Matt, that's why they call it March Madness. I know this is... March uh, is going to drive me mad. <laughs> Chayton Nera. Football pass to Nealon. To Nick Salmon. To White. Pump fakes. Loses it. Another circus move. Abu Kaba throws it behind his head. Kamara comes down with it. And his corner is good. Oko pump fake, works his way inside, short floater, no good. Rebound to Abu Kaba. Is Come on, where's the foul? Shaden there coming down with it. Uh, I can't believe they didn't call a foul there. Joe Kamara overhead pass to Nick Salmon. As long as they're consistent, Shaden there for three is no good. Kaba, uh, rather, Etinosa Kumbor coming down with the rebound. Demarge Taylor to Oko. 4 3 is off the front of the rim, tipping it to Etinosa Kumbor. Loose ball. ET comes up with it. Marcelo Louis Charles working his way in. And an offensive foul going to be called against Marcelo Louis Charles. I don't know. That, that was, it looks like Charles tried to avoid the contact. There was some contact, but uh, I don't know. Tough call there on the boxes. Eight. The eighth foul against the Brockton Boxers. If the refs were paying attention, it would be a one and one shooting situation for the Hilltoppers. They're more concerned with a little spot on the floor. Shout out to assistant coach Kevin Rooney of the Brockton Boxers for bringing out a towel. Football pass to Brendan White. He taps it to Neil and Nara. Back to White, backing up. Now overhead to Chayton. Chayton working his way inside. Draws the foul against Karan Harris and will be at the line for a one and one. Yeah, Naha, he's kind of a wild player when it comes to going to the basket. Not a lot of control, but and he's, he's quick. He's a running back. He's In a running back every, for the football every team. Every sense of the word. He finds the open hole and does whatever he can to find that hole and blitz it open. 45 to 45 as Chayton Nera hits his first attempt. And Durfee has the lead once again, 46-45, four and a half to go in a wild fourth quarter between these big three divisional rivals. E.T. with the nice one-handed hook. hook shot. 
A steal by Oko, and E.T. comes down with it off the glass and in. Two quick buckets for the Brockton Boxers, back to a three-point edge, 49 to 46 the score. Yeah, great, great defense and hustle by the Boxers. Oko is in disbelief that he was called for the block. It was body contact, but good aggressive ball play by your Brockton Boxers. Like, I like, like, I like the said. strategy here by head coach Bob Bowen. Full court press. Don't let Durfee inbound the ball with four minutes left. Durfee has been more and more utilizing long football type Hail Mary passes as Chaden Era hits his first attempt. Yeah, that, that's a good um, game plan right now is to full court press them because these guys have been out here most of the ball game, so you know they're getting a little tired. Which, if you're a little tired, you're liable to make a little bit more mistakes. Demarge Taylor. Oko calling for the ball. He's got some room. Back to Taylor. Taylor at the top of the key. Out to Oko. Pump fake for three. Steps inside. Three second violation called against Brockton. Tough call right there on the boxes. And a explanation to head coach Bob Bone is Brendan White on the other end. Oh, come on, he was out of control. Brendan White drawing the foul, that's the 10th against the boxers, a double bonus situation. And Any reason, foul from here on out will reason be I said he was out, excuse me, Matt, the reason I said he was out of control because he fell into the defensive player. I mean, he initiated the contact. 345 to go, all tied up, 49 to 49. Brendan White for the lead is good. To Marge Taylor. To Karan Harris driving inside is assaulted, no foul. Gets his own loose ball, puts it off the glass and in. Excellent job by Harris to focus, get his offensive rebound. A little bit too much English on that for Joe Kamari. Threw it. <laughs> Into the turfy bench. He almost threw it hand. like a, um, a, a, um, a discus. Because it went to his left. That was way yeah. off. Well, free inbounds in the offensive zone for the boxers. Precious Oko to Karan Harris. Quick three. Looked good off the back of the rim and out. Now Nick Salmon with it. 3.20 to go. 51-50. Brockton on top. Brendan White sidestepping Demarge Taylor to Neelan Nera for three is good. Yeah. Big shot right there, Matt. Big shot for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Oko to Taylor. Down low for Harris. Harris to Taylor. Working his way inside to Oko. For three is no good. Abu Kaba tipping the rebound. Good, good, good call right there Durfee. by the referee. Good call. Precious Oko with a sigh of relief. Right right there in front of us. The play was right there in front of us. We had a good good view of it. Timeout. Definitely off the hilltop. Timeout called by head coach Bob Bone. Uh, gives us all a chance to breathe with two minutes and 50 seconds left. 53 to 50, the score of the Hilltoppers leading the Brockton Boxers in the first round of the MIAA playoffs. Again, Brockton defeating the Hilltoppers. But uh, both times during the regular season and the big three divisional champions due to a weird tie-breaking rule are on the road against, again, the team they beat twice and a team they won the division against. Thank you, Wellesley, for that one. So an action-packed fourth quarter and really starting to step it up in the middle of the third where the Brockton Boxers we were tied after one, we were tied after two, and we were tied after three. It's been a pretty evenly played game. Both teams, a lot of turnovers. Both teams hitting big shots. I want to take this opportunity to thank our cameraman and the head of the Mad Dog Research Team tonight. Making the delivery all the way from BMC Durfee High School in Fall River yet again is Mike the Postman Simmons. Another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Clean inbounds for the boxers. Karan Harris to Oko. 
Oh, go double teamed by Chayton and Milan Nara. Demarge Taylor over to Harris, back to Taylor. 15 on the shot clock. Taylor driving inside, holds on. Oh! And one for Karan Harris. Or rather, it's Demarge Taylor headed to the line to give the boxers the lead with two and a half minutes to go. And that was a pretty Isaiah Thomas imitation by Taylor going to the basket, somehow cutting his way through all that defense and getting the ball off, off the glass and in. Chance for a three-point play right here, big shot. Demarge Taylor missing his attempt off the knee of Chayton Nara, and he's able to gather himself to White to Nealon. Nealon back to Brendan White. A long three is no good. Cron Harris jumping, and an offensive foul against the Durfee Hilltoppers. The fan section has some not so nice words for the official after that call. That was great. Um, defensive position by Harris. He kept his position for the rebound. Durfee player had no other choice but to go over the top because he really wanted it. Great call. The right call. Demarge Taylor to Oko. Oko pump fakes for three, drives baseline, throws it to Glenn Darty. Able to recover is Demarge Taylor. Short floater, no good. And an offensive foul against Etinosa Kumbor called for the push. E.T.'s fourth personal foul, so he's in some serious trouble with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Neelan Nera at the line to take the two shots. With two minutes left in the game, you gotta leave him in there. And Turkey has a one point lead. Two at the line is Neelan Nera. 55-53, two minutes to go. Oko to Taylor, Taylor to Karan Harris. Harris back to Taylor, to Oko for a long three. Is good, wow. Brockton has a one point lead. Big shot right there, he's been doing it all night. 147 left to go, 56 to 55. And thank you, Miles. You jinxed it. You said not a lot of timeouts called in the third or fourth quarter. It's been about 12 seconds between timeouts for the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, well, it, it's both both coaches want this ball game, so they're going to have to call timeout. They got a lot of timeouts to call. I'm sure his Durfee's team's a little worn down. I'm sure Brockton, their starting squad's a little bit worn down, but they've had more bench players come in to give them a little fresh relief. So basically, Matt, it's going to come down to who executes the best. Because, you know, it's been a big-time turnover ball game for both sides. It's, it's just a matter of execution. Can you execute and get the rebound? Rebound and execution will decide this basketball game. A little bit preemptive, but Miles, you've got one game ball to give to one member of each of these schools. Who gets it? Well, right now, for the boxers, I give it to uh, Oko. Precious Oko. He's been hitting those clutch shots out there for the uh, boxes. Got to look at him. For the Hilltoppers, go out on a limb and say Brendan White. A number of big threes down in the corner. Solid on his free throw attempts. Yeah, he has come up big in clutch time for the um, Durfee Hilltoppers to keep them in this ball game. Chayton Nera to White, back to Chayton. Back to White, back to Chayton. Over to Nick Salmon. Salmon back to Chayton. Over to Joe Kamara. Kamara bouncing it back to Chayton. Seven on the shot clock. Neil and Nara now. Three on the shot clock. A long three put up by Chayton. No good ET with the rebound. And that's why you're gonna leave the big man in with his four personal fouls. Nice defense by the boxes. Made the Durfee Hilltoppers shoot a long three. Probably the shot they really didn't want. Brockton very alertly is going to waste out as much of the minute left in this game as they can. Ten on the shot clock. Cron Harris to Demarge Taylor working his way inside to Glenn Darty down low is fouled on his way up. There's five on the shot clock and Tijon Glenn Darty, a very good free throw shooter, 
That was a was beautiful, charity, stripe for excuse me, shots. Matt. Yeah, excuse me. That was a beautiful drive by Taylor and a beautiful dish off to the big man right there waiting for the ball. And critical shot right here. 56 to 55, the score. Glenn Darty missing on his first attempt. 51.4 seconds, and whoever's behind at the end of that will be headed home early in the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. The winner goes on to play the Mansfield Hornets at Mansfield Wednesday night, if it's Brockton. We'll have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. Chayton Narrow over to Joe Kamara. Kamara back to Chayton. One point, uh, two point edge rather for the boxers. 57-55, there'll be about 20 seconds left at the end oh. of the shot clock, and ET I, I, is going to follow that out was all, game. I'm sorry, that was all ball, Matt. I, and, the, and I don't blame the, the, the kids for saying, come on, that was all ball. I did not see a foul there, folks. ET is fouled out of this game. Sonny Oak and Lola will come in to replace him. Brendan White. My aforementioned MVP of the night for the Durfee Hilltoppers at the line for two very big shots and hitting his first. I mean, nice drive by Brendan White. To go to the basket to get a foul drawn, but uh, he got a big break there. Brendan White to tie the game is good. Takes advantage of the, call, of the foul call. The Durfee. phantom foul call ties his ball game up like you just said. Durfee calls a quick timeout, 34.1 seconds left in this game. Brockton with the ball and the momentum. And I'm sure the direction from head coach Bob Bowen. Hold the ball for 30 seconds. Don't put it up unless there's three seconds or less on the shot clock. Because we don't want to give Durfee an opportunity to march right down the court, put up a quick shot and send us home early. Right. Uh, Brockton needs to get a shot off between... 25 seconds and 28 seconds within that 30 shot clock. Don't try to shoot it up with 30 seconds and, and the buzz of sounds. But the key is do not turn the basketball over. Give yourself a chance and to take a shot to win this thing. Or possibly take the lead because there will be time left for Durfee to come back down to court. But get a shot, a good shot off with his less as much time used off that 30 second clock. And um, hopefully things will go your way. Well, the winner of this game, as I mentioned, heads to Mansfield on March 1st to take on the Hornets, the number one seed in the south section. The Hornets come in at 20 and two. Demarge Taylor for the Brockton Boxers as the Derby crowd comes alive. A three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Brockton almost certainly going to use all of that before they put up a shot attempt. Taylor to Oko. 10 now, Oko stops and pops for two. No good, Oak and Lola put back a 10. No good, gets his own rebound. It's fouled and Oak and Lola with 9.3 on the clock will be at the line for two shots. Excellent hustle by the boxes, unfortunately. You got one of the big men at the, at the free throw line, and if you're Durfee's coach, that's who you want at the free throw line. They say it comes down to free throws, Miles. Critical. I don't think that saying was made for situations like this, but why not? Oak and Lola all tied up 57 to 57. And Sonny trying to take the lead for the Brockton Boxers. It's the back of the rim, no good. 9.3 on the clock, Okinola with one free throw attempt left. In, out, in. Wow. <laughs> and Brockton has a one point edge. Brockton calling a quick timeout. 9.3 seconds to go. Brockton up by 1.58 to 57. The Boxers leading over their big three divisional rivals, the Durfee Hilltoppers, Miles. What is Bob Bowen saying in the huddle right now? Well, what, what they're saying is you got to get a big man on the inbounds pass. Make it tough as they can possibly can on Durfee to inbound that basketball. So get a big man on the inbounds. Have his hands waving like a bird. 
and anything can happen. On the other end, what is Jamison Guimon telling the Durfee Hilltoppers? Make, make a good pass. Get it down the court as quick. Pass the ball without touching the, um, the floor if possible. Get the ball down to the other end of the court as fast as possible and get yourself off a, a two-point shot. You don't have to go for the three. Try a two. Well, 58 to 57, the Brockton Boxers leading the Durfee Hilltoppers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, Jordan alongside big game Miles Jackson and what could be the most exciting finish of the year, the Boxers going with Sonny Okinlola, Tejan Glenn Darty, Precious Oko, Karan Harris, and Demarge Taylor. The Hilltoppers, Joe Camara will inbound looking for Chayton Nara, Brendan White, Nick Salmon, and Neelan Nara all on the floor. And no foul, you can't foul. Chayton Nara down low to Nick Salmon for three is no good. Okinlola carries it out of bounds with .2 seconds on the clock. And Durfee will have about half a second, <laughs> give or take, as the officials are discussing how much time is left on the clock. Now the thing is the for the boxes, they have to, everybody has to have their hands up and cover the red paint area. You have to have your hands up. Looks like the clock is going to be reset. Tyler Durfee calling a timeout. Woo! Point two seconds left, 58 to 57. Brockton on top. Durfee with the ball has less than a second to throw up a prayer. Well, basically, Matt, what Durfee has to do when the inbound pass happens, whoever gets the inbound pass has to be in the shoot mode and take the shot. If time doesn't run out, it's going to be very interesting to see the, um, the buzzer and where the shot has left the Durfee Hilltopper's hand, if they can pull it off. Miles, the MVP right now. For the boxers, Tyrone Victor, the 6'9 sophomore center for the Brockton boxers. It looks like he's going to go in the game he is. The tallest member by about half a foot for either of these teams is going to be camping out right under the basket. Joe Kamara going to inbound. Looks like Durfee wants to call a timeout. They just called a timeout. MIAA rule state you cannot call back-to-back -back timeouts. Okay, good call, good and call. The ref is telling them as such. Brendan White repeatedly slamming yes. his hands together. He wants to call a timeout. Durfee's not going to get it. I don't think White knows that you can't call two back-to-back -back timeouts. He's begging the officials for a timeout. Brockton's not going to give him the benefit of the doubt and, and take their last timeout. Brockton's saying, what's the holdup? Yeah, come on, let's go. Clock and make Durfee inbound this ball. I mean, I don't understand it. You know the rules. Why doesn't the coach know the rules? Durfee's still calling for a timeout. They're not going to get it. And the ref is explaining that to Mr. Demond right now. Brendan White probably has nerve-ending damage in his fingertips from slamming his hands together. <laughs> And he's still calling for a timeout. Durfee needs to understand that am I, this isn't am I, new for the playoffs. Exactly. Folks. All season long, you can't call back-to-back -back timeouts. And Durfee's not going to get it. Joe Kamara, point two on the clock. Guarded by Glenn Darty, last second three is off the front of the rim. Brockton is going to move on to face the 20-2 Mansfield Hornets by final score of 58 to 57 miles. It was ugly, it was hard fought, it was dirty, but Brockton did what they had to do to move on. Yeah, three good adjectives right there. A very hard fought game by both sides. A lot of turnovers though in this ball game. That's why it was so close, but Brockton came out a winner because of their little bit more intensity on the rebounding. Their rebounding helped them win this ball game. Basically, that's what happened was the rebounding, Matt.
we're going to get the thoughts from head coach Bob Bowen and see what he has to see to say rather about his team's big win and what his thoughts are going into the game against Mansfield and they move on to face the 20 and 2 Mansfield Hornets a victorious head coach Bob Bowen coach it was ugly it was dirty but the boxers did what they had to do you're moving on to face the Mansfield Hornets well, we had just enough tonight, and a lot of people made some big plays. Sonny made some big baskets. Precious was hot all night. Uh, Amir came in and gave us a couple big plays. So even though it was real sloppy and really looked poor, a lot of guys did some good things to help win it for us. One point at the end of the first quarter, tied after the second, tied after the third. A clean slate going into the fourth. What was the we message to the team in that huddle between the third and fourth quarters to give your team the win? Well, it was that we're wearing them down, that they're getting tired, and that we're a stronger team and keep the pressure on them. 20-2, and two, the Mansfield Hornets, they'll host you on March 1st, Wednesday night. What's the strategy going into practice tomorrow? Well, we're going to work on uh, the offense. Our offense was very poor when we went down there. We've got to score some baskets on them. Our defense was pretty good in Mansfield. Our offense was terrible, as it was the first half tonight. So we're going to try and figure out how to get the ball in the basket. Coach, congratulations on a big win. Thank you.